roughly four in 10 Americans have experienced significantly higher levels of stress because of, you guessed it, COVID-19. That's a staggering 40%. Wow. Let me say that backwards. Wow. So according to the CDC, 33.3% of women and 20.4% of men respondents reported at least one triggered adverse mental or behavior issue since the pandemic struck. That's a huge number. Are you one of those people? Who would agree that this cor the coronavirus has wreaked havoc on your life? Raise your virtual hand. All right, all right. So I sense there are a lot of hands going up and a lot of head nods. Some would say that the government has created it. There's a lot of um, conspiracy theories. Others blame the media. But I assert today that it's our own minds that are the culprit. And we'll get back to that a little bit later. So now, in addition to the rise of health conditions like anxiety, depression, loneliness, anger, distress, it's estimated there, there has been a 20% uptick in domestic violence as well, uh, and a surge in the use of illicit and prescription, like opiate, drugs, and alcohol in the United States recently. And unfortunately, suicidal ideation, which means a lot of people have considered suicide, has increased too since this whole thing kicked off. These statistics are astonishing, right? So listen, I'm a positive dude. Trust me, I really am. So I'm not here to report doom and gloom, but rather to remind you of your dominion and your glory. My intention for this time today, I'm privileged to have with you, is to reveal the power, restore your hope, and to help you reclaim your sound mind. Just as the sun sets, the sun rises again. Darkness may fall, but brightness comes in the daytime. So, so it is with you. You, your business, your relationships, your finances, and your psyche. There's a but here, so I gotta admit it. So it's a big but too, listen up. Who out there like big butts? Just kidding. But it's totally up to you, that's our but. So guess what? It means that you are your own superhero. I'm not the superhero. None of the speakers here at the uh, summit are your superhero. You are it. So put that away in your toolbox because you're definitely gonna need that a little bit later. Hey, 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 it's a great day, fam. After all that I just shared, it's still a great day. Peace and blessings. I am Dr. Morris Red, a transformational healthy living coach, and I am a comeback champion. So my purpose here today uh, is to share with everybody exactly what you need to do to de-stress, to get rid of all the anxiety and other things that are going on as a result of COVID as well as a, uh, as a result of life so that you can be a comeback champion. So who's with me? All right, I see your hands, I see your hands. I know it's virtual, it's all in my mind. So let's, uh, let's get right with it. So what we wanna do, we wanna curtail and even alleviate a lot of that self-induced stress that we typically find ourselves attracted to. Uh, if you apply the three guiding principles that I'm gonna share with you, uh, I guarantee you it's gonna absolutely change your life. All right, so again, throw up your virtual hands if that sounds good to you. Now, say this, I am a comeback champion. Again, I am a comeback champion. One more time, this time say it with some meaning, touch your chest, do whatever. I am a comeback champion. Awesome. So there's something truly empowering about the words I am. In the Bible, it talks about I am that I am. So when you say something and you uh, precede it with the words I am, it adds power, and it, it really gives you dominion to be able to um, reach into that. So in 2014, I was diagnosed by Dr. Um, Mitchell at um, George Washington Hospital Center with a disorder called pemphigus. It's a rare uh, autoimmune disorder characterized by varying size, painful blisters that are broken out around my skin and on my scalp. 
They can affect other mucus areas, including the inside of my mouth. So while I sat there in the hospital, in true disbelief, I'm thinking, this can't be me. Dr. Mitchell continued that pemphigus is a nuisance disorder, but rarely life-threatening. Thank God for that. I guess I was happy about it, but that really wasn't pleasing to me. The fact that I'm thinking I'm a healthy young dude, uh, I eat well, I exercise somewhat regularly, and you know I do all the things that I think I'm supposed to do to stay healthy, it didn't even matter. So there I was at George Washington Hospital uh, in DC about two years later being told that this invincible brother had two autoimmune disorders that were chronic and there was really nothing they can do except uh, ease the symptoms. So talk about disbelief, I couldn't understand. I ate nutrition food, like I said, for the most part, I made healthy choices and, re and was relatively active. So that probably describes most of you, I would think. I suspect, considering the caliber of the audience here, that the majority of us would say, uh, that's me. You know, I do what I have to do. Um, I can do a little more, but hey. So basically, this happened to impact me with my employment, with my uh, family, with my finances, just everything. I could do I couldn't do anything about this diagnosis except accept it. It was already determined, so what was I to do? So I figured out how to help myself. The notion did not kick in until I had fully accepted what was truly happening. So first principle we're gonna talk about is acceptance. And I just go by this little uh, mantra, it is what it is. Listen guys, we've gotta stop trying to control what simply cannot be controlled especially as it relates to the past. The past is the past. You can't do anything about it. Tomorrow, you can't do anything about that. You can plan for it, but that's it. You do have the authority to work in the now. So this diagnosis was already set in stone, but what that meant is the prognosis was not set in stone. That was truly up to me. And that is the piece that you have control over. You know, somebody can give you a, a bad report, but how you take it and what you do with that is all up to you, period. So the good news is that you get to reflect and you get to learn on the past, but you don't use it. There's an author named uh, George Santayana, I believe, and he had a saying that those who ignore history are condemned to repeat it. So this is why we are used to the past, that we, this is why we use the past as a reference, but we don't use it as a disability. So now right now, uh, we are in the midst of an exceptionally opportune time. Now, most of you all will call it a challenging time. Um, and they are, but for those who really believe that, but I, I choose to see it a little bit differently. Uh, we all have unfavorable situations uh, that come up in our lives with our children, with our family, with our jobs. This is a pandemic that happens to be here, so we can't do anything about it, but we can do something about how we respond. Principle number two is take charge of your response. And my saying that goes along with that is, my response is my responsibility. So say that, my response is my responsibility. Did you know that it's not our experiences that make the greatest impression on our lives, but it's basically the uh, subsequent responses that we attach to those. Sometimes I call them the stories that we put to them. And we have the ability to create those one way or the other. They can be positive stories and negative. How we perceive and respond to an experience, it really makes all the difference. Just think about any situation yourself. When you think you're having a bad day or you kick your foot on the bed and you say, I'm gonna have a bad day, then you do. So Christmas 2016, let me paint a picture. Um, two years have passed away since I was um, diagnosed. Now I'm in intensive care unit at Washington Hospital Center's burn unit. Uh, my skin is literally falling off of me in several different places on my body, including my scalp. Boils rid riddled my soles uh, on my feet. Blisters covered my, the crown of my head. And every area in my body had sores. So every several hours, the nurses were pumping morphine through their IV into me. The pain 
was excruciating. My skin looked like uh, it was real bloody as if I was, get this, a captured runaway slave. And I certainly didn't have the holiday spirit, even though it was just four days after Christmas. All this was really bad, and I didn't like it one bit. But you know, it really didn't matter if I liked it or not. It didn't matter what I was going to do. I had a choice to make. I can either sit there and just focus on the negative things, or I can go right in and start to identify some positive things. And so instead of um, looking at these poisonous situations that I found myself in, I decided to look for positive things. One, I was alive. Two, I was in a place where they were going to be taking good care of me. Three, my family and my friends were praying and supporting me along the way. Four, I had health insurance, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, it covered my expenses. I had all my faculties. I was able to move around, even though it was a lot of pain. And um, I was able to still uh, talk to people hear people understand you know so i decided my response in that situation was going to be one of gratefulness you know i was grateful for the things that i had and then i just discarded the things that i didn't have and the fear that i had at the time it had to disappear and once i locked in with that then there was no turning back so let me remind you who's a superhero i'm not your superhero you're your superhero you get the chance to do that. Principle number three is to be grateful. Know that there's value in everything. I used to say there's good in everything, but people get, get upset when I say that. So I got the grace to understand that along this journey, that everything has some kind of value, you know, but you really got to dig deep. You got to uh, uncover things. You got to wipe away all the dirt so that you can see the good in it the positive in it, the lesson in it. And if you do that, then you won't really start, uh, you won't continue to harp on negative things like we so easily fall into. And that's partially because of the news, that's partially because of the friends that we keep. It's for a numerous, uh, for numerous reasons, we, we easily fall into that uh, realm. But what I'm uh, suggesting that you do is start to identify those small victories, those, those good things, those positive uh, attributes that you have and be unapolog about, unapologetic about it. So these things I started to do. Now I had suffered still physically, but mentally I wasn't suffering as much uh, anymore when I made that decision. So I wish this hadn't happened, of course, and we all don't want things negative to happen. Nevertheless, I got a chance to see how God was gonna use grace to be able to work through me and, and with me so that I can recognize these things as blessings, a lot of things as blessings, even um, while I was going through it. And that's the key too, through. You know, if you go through something, thank God you didn't stop there. You didn't die there. If you go through, that's a blessing in itself. So I want you to make sure that you share this type of idea with other people. I had my beautiful children um, by my side every day. So it was a lot of different things that were positive that was happening. So now I want to give you a couple of examples of things that you might have gone through and you think, well, there's nothing good about this. Uh, and again, I try not to use the word good, but there's value in it. So some of you all may have gotten divorced. Hopefully not many or hopefully not any of you all, but some of you all may have gotten a divorce and that's a very traumatic situation. But I got to tell you that there's always something that's positive that came out of that. Hopefully, part of that relationship was something pleasant. You enjoyed each other's company for some time of it, hopefully. Uh, if you have children, you know, you have wonderful uh, seeds that you've created with this person, and that's a lifelong blessing to you. Um, maybe you and that person uh, created some wealth together, or just you all were each other's mastermind. So you all were able to bank things off of each other and some enterprise came out of that. So there's, I mean, there's lots of different things. Of course, there's lots of different things I can start to identify that went wrong or weren't good about a divorce. And a divorce in itself obviously is not good, but maybe 
that person wasn't the right person. So that, you know, a divorce in that case is good. Um, you, you got away, you, you got away clean. So that's something. Um, a car accident, again, not a good thing, but if you have a car accident, perhaps you were thinking, hey, I need a new car. <laughs> and so now here's an opportunity, your insurance kicks in, you're able to get something a little bit fancier or maybe even, you know, maybe just equal, but you're able to get something different than what you had before. So that's a positive advantage. Maybe you learned a lesson about whatever you were doing, you really don't need to do that. Maybe you were texting and driving and you hit a pole and now it costs you $500 because you wanted to say hello to your girlfriend. You know, so whatever is the situation, there's some good in it. And this may sound a little far-fetched because, you know, we're thinking about positive, negative things, but putting a positive spin on it. But these situations surface. So you want to make sure that you're able to uh, change that in your mind of how you see it, the story that you make. So amidst that storm, there's still always something to be thankful for. So to realize your blessings, you just must think on those positive aspects, not on the storm itself, but getting through the storm. So once I started to focus on the good and the up and come things about uh, everything, everything started to elevate for me. Everything started to increase. Everything started to improve. My medical insurance was taken care of, uh, which I said I would talk about that. Well, uh, when I entered the hospital, I didn't have medical insurance and they quickly rectified that and that averted me from having a $924,000 bill from two months being in the hospital in ICU. Um, I got an opportunity to meet a lot of the um, new people. You know, a lot of them were ill, unfortunately, but then also the, um, the uh, health practitioners, the nurses and everybody. Uh, I led several of them to, to uh, have a relationship with Christ. Um, a lot of people visited me we got a, I got a lot of gifts, a lot of um, calls and cards and things like that. A lot of people supported my family while I was in the hospital. I was in there for two whole months. And so all these different things happened while I was in the hospital. Another thing, I had been running myself rampant uh, before uh, I got into the hospital. And I truly got some peaceful rest while I was there, especially high on morphine. And then another thing, unfortunate, However, uh, it did happen. My father passed away um, one month, well, it was about three weeks after I went to the hospital. And I was unable to make his home going service. But two weeks prior to me actually going into the hospital, I had just visited him in Atlanta and we spent a wonderful week together. We were laughing, uh, joking. Um, he, was, he was going through, um, um, intestinal cancer and um, actually was already told, you know, he didn't have that long to live, but we never knew how long we were just going to put it in God's hands. So that's what we did. And basically uh, I had visited him um, again, had a fantastic time, came back uh, to DC and um, about a week later, uh, that's when I entered the hospital with all these uh, crazy symptoms. And December 29th was when I entered. I got out of the hospital on February 27th. So I was in there almost a full two months. But again, during that time, he did transition. Um, they did have the home going service. Initially, I was very upset that I couldn't be at my own father's funeral. And hindsight, while in the hospital, I thought about it, it was like, it's a blessing that I didn't last see my father confined in this box, lifeless. The last um, vision, the last memory that I have of my dad was of uh, us playing and joking and just having a great time, watching football. You know, we were just eating good meals. It was just a grand time. And so that was my last memory or that is my last memory. So again, horrible situation. You're not, a, you're not able to make your parents' funeral. So that may seem like a really bad scenario, but again, I turned it into a positive because to me, it really was ideal that my last memory of my dad is always gonna be this pleasant one with a big smile on his face and not all made up again, sitting in the casket or laying in the casket. So, you know, things like that 
were really important to me. Um, so I sat in what I call club med, uh, set of club fed at, at the Washington Hospital Center. And um, people just poured in resources and kindness. So are you seeing what I'm, I'm saying? Are you understanding that you can always turn these negative experiences into positives because they do have positive implications? So friends, you can do this too. All you have to do is make a decision to do exactly what I'm telling you. And again, this is principle three, be grateful um, and find value in everything. So a lot of bad things may have happened this year. I know that, but they do not have to define you or control the trajectory of the final experience of 2020. I know at the beginning of this year, you wrote down your plans, you wrote down your um, New Year's resolutions and said, 2020, I've got vision. A lot of people had that. And you still can have that vision. 2020 is not over. Ladies and gentlemen, you have three months left to do, have, and be whatever you want to do, have, and be. So don't let this be a wash. I want you all to say right now, this is my time. This is my time. All right. Uh, Brother Shea always says, this is my January 1st. So you notice I have very, uh, various mantras um, that I say in affirmations. And during the summit, you're gonna hear many different affirmations that not only encourage me, um, they're gonna encourage you and they're gonna equip you for success. So I wanted to share a few of those with you, but other things that I do, um, I live vicariously, I read, I um, go to events, um, I watch YouTube videos. Those are different things that encourage and edify me. But um, mantras, what you say to yourself, remember I said, I am that I am. What you say to yourself, I think is one of, if not the most important thing, because other people say all kinds of things about you and you listen, but you don't have to. You need to be the comeback champion, all right? And I don't mean come back on them and be like, hey, that's not me. But I'm saying you need to be your own superhero today. All right. So I discussed several different things. I want to just share a quick poem with you and then um, tell you a few of the mantras that I think you should adopt. You can make your own variations, but you want to have something that you say to yourself daily. All right. So um, this is simple. I got this. So whenever anything comes up, when I'm about to take a test, when I'm about to uh, uh, meet somebody for the first time, do an interview, um, have a consultation, anything, I say, I got this. Look myself in the mirror and I say, I got this, okay? And then I also say that I am my own superhero. That's why I keep repeating that one. I am my own superhero. Um, God's creative force is unlimited and therefore I am unlimited. That's another one I say. Again, God's creative force is unlimited and therefore I am unlimited. I have unlimited possibilities at my command because I am a reality commander, okay? Um, there's a poem by uh, Hemsley, what's his first name? Can't remember his first name right now. Um, it goes, um, somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't, but he be the one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled in with a trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he hid it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. Someone scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. So he took off his hat and he took off his coat and before we knew he'd begun it. With a twist of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. There are thousands who will tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands who will prophesy failure. There, there, there are thousands who will tell you one by one the dangers that wait to, to assail you. But just buckle in and lift up your chin. Just take off your hat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that couldn't be done and you'll do it. All right, I'll fumble through that a little bit. But that, that poem is called, uh, It Couldn't Be Done. And uh, so I encourage you to uh, look that up. It Couldn't Be Done. And 
encourage yourself. Again, get on these YouTube um, channels. You can learn just about anything you want to learn on YouTube. You can get just about anything you want to get on the internet and Google. Um, you can meet just about anybody or at least follow them on Instagram. You know, there's all kinds of different uh, uh, resources out there. There are books that are available that you can get. There are um, songs, there's uh, podcasts, different things like that. You have to be your own superhero. You have to bring these resources to you. You have to go and capture them, okay? Secure them, lock them down, and then tune in, tap in. And that reminds me, you can go on YouTube and watch people like Abraham Hicks. Um, listen to, read, or, um, or watch uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, you can get books like um, Dr. Wayne Dyer's Your Thoughts uh, are your Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. You can get um, Dr. Morris Red's book, Grace for Granted. Uh, you can get, um, what's another? Oh, As a Man Thinketh. That's kind of like my, my, my little Bible next to the Bible, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. So there are lots of different resources, lots of different tools and strategies. And, you know, all the people that you, you are hearing this week uh, at our Comeback Champion Summit, they're great resources. And that brings me to this, coaching. So all these different resources you can get, you can gather, you can, you can tune in. But what most people need to really get moving is a coach. They need somebody who will uh, guide them, who will hold their hand, who will keep them accountable because most of us will get all these materials and we will jump into them and we'll learn lots of different things and we'll apply some of the things but unfortunately we won't get the success that we want. So if you really want the success that you want, you need to get somebody who is successful in that area um, or is successful at guiding you so that you can reach your goals. And so I admonish each person who is watching this uh, to listen, tune into the individuals who are gonna be speaking this week or who have, who have already spoken. Make sure you're taking notes get their contact information, um, go to their websites, check them out. You need somebody who's going to walk you along, do those baby steps until you start walking, okay? So I wanna give you a free resource also. If you go to info at mind over matter, you, the letter U, dot com, that's info, I-N-F-O, at mind, over matter, the letter U, dot com. I will give you one piece of these principles that I just talked about gratitude. I'll give you a 21 day uh, gratitude journal. It's a beautiful journal that has um, some quotes in there, um, inspirational quotes, beautiful cover. You can download it so we don't have to touch. We can stay away more than six feet away. We can stay state to state away, but you can get these items uh, just by sending your contact information, again, to info at mindovermatteru.com, and I'll shoot that right over. In addition to that, uh, we'll be giving you a free list of resources similar to the list that I just um, identified a few minutes ago, the, the YouTube pages and things like that, that you can get more training, more information on mindset. You definitely need something on mindset. I think that is the number one um, uh, factor in somebody's success is their mindset you know it, it's not religion um it's not luck it's not um starting off wealthy because a lot of people who start off wealthy they lose their money it's definitely not getting a gang of money when you're not wealthy because a lot of lottery winners they lose their money so it's, it's mindset it's what you think and how you uh, frame things what your perspective is that really count so those are the things that you need to work on first, first and foremost. So we're gonna give you some resources that will guide you to some of the experts in that area. And many of those experts, again, are on this virtual stage with me. So you're gonna hear from them uh, live and direct. And some of them are gonna give you some tools and resources um, and guide you to some things that you can get started right away. So again, make sure that you have uh, your notebook, your pen, your tablet, your, your phone, whatever you take notes on so that you can get this information 
and you can get um, uh, a list of those uh, resources. And I invite you to also uh, let me know at that info um, page uh, if you're interested in any, in any coaching. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am an 18 year uh, retired uh, educator. I also worked in administration. Uh, all of this was in Washington DC schools. Um, I did public schools, I did part of um, public charter schools as well as some private schools. Um, and then I was an administrator for, uh, for eight years as well. I taught on every level from primary school and up to post-secondary school, students at N Northern Virginia Community College and students at Georgetown University. Uh, I've coached and mentored executives, uh, youth, um, adults in Washington DC area. I built two, well I didn't build, I built one and I uh, governed, so I was the chairman of, of another nonprofit organization uh, in, in Ward 7, one of Washington DC's um, most disenfranchised areas. Uh, I'm a healthy living coach and what that means is I try to help people find their potential and fulfill their potential to optimal success in the areas that they desire. Okay, so because I know that you want your best life, it all begins with gratitude. So that's the one that I encourage you to do first. Have gratitude for everything. Remember, everything has value. So again, uh, my name is Dr. Morris Red. Uh, I can be reached at info at mindovermatteru.com. And um, if you have any questions, um, you know, contact me there. So now, uh, let me quickly just re-go uh, over a few of those resources. My book, Grace for Granted, uh, Finding Extraordinary Blessings in Ordinary Settings um, That Help With Your Mental Attitude, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Wayne Dyer, D-Y-E-R, and for your mindset mastery, again, pick up or listen to Abraham Hicks. She has books and she's on audio and video all the time. Dr. Joe Dispenza. And then also, I'm sure most of the people here or most of the people watching have seen or read or listened to The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Byrne, Byrne, I think. I'm sorry. So uh, make sure you get those. Again, my name is Dr. Morris Red. They call me Dr. Mo. And I am a comeback champion. And today, is my January 1st.